We want to be skateboarders. And this is how we do it. The alternate route. Oh! For these two, Curtis and Cassandra, they're skateboarding with a little bit of vision, but with a ton of feel. With their vision, they're skateboarding in a, just a sea of blur. And the lights are helping, are guiding, but I mean, still, what they're doing is, is ex extremely courageous. Oh, Curtis, that was so good. Skateboarding has been a popular activity for over 40 years. Yeah. And the skating community in Calgary is large, with many local skate parks to choose from. The blind and partially sighted skateboard community in Calgary is somewhat smaller, and currently there are no accessible skate parks to skate at. In the fall of 2020, a 15-year-old high school student decided that needed to change. My name is Curtis Ruddle, and I go to school at Bishop Carroll High School in Calgary, Alberta. Curtis? Hi. Did you have your bucket all put together yet? Yeah. So I have an eye condition called aniridia, which is essentially the loss of the iris, which, for those of you who don't know, is the colored part of the eye. And so I have about 10% vision. My sister and my dad have it as well. And it's been a condition from birth, so that's all I've ever known. Curtis and his younger sister, Cassandra, have always been encouraged by their parents to try whichever activity they want, and neither is afraid of failure. I like to joke and say that whatever you name, I've at least tried it. It is a long list indeed, and it includes golf, wheelchair basketball, curling, swimming, bowling, and like most Canadian kids, hockey. I used to play quote unquote sighted hockey, and now we're really into blind hockey. I would see all of these people skateboarding down the street, crazy, and it was like, that's kind of interesting, but I don't think I would ever be able to do that. And then there was the Dan Mancina event in Calgary. Skateboarder Dan Mancina has retinitis pigmentosa and has become one of the top low vision skateboarders in the world and a spokesperson for low vision athletes. He visited Calgary in 2019. After that, it kind of started the whole conversation of adaptive skateboarding in Calgary. Woo! My name is Matt Jans, and I'm an adaptive skateboarder. Matt is a partially sighted skateboarder, youth instructor, and role model for the blind and low vision community in Calgary. And he does it all with flair. I would describe myself by saying I'm high energy, chaotic. I'm just a lover of joy. I'm visually impaired with uh, a condition, a hereditary condition called retinitis pigmentosa. My grandfather was blind at 40-ish, and I'm on the same track as him. So I'm 32 right now and pretty regularly losing vision, starting with like uh, night vision, peripheral vision, and detail. Now we're just skating. Right now I kind of see a little bit through some central vision, though it's really dark and distorted and then the rest of my vision is all black blobs and flashing lights as my brain tries to reinterpolate broken visual information. As an avid skateboarder, when Matt's vision deteriorated, he decided to start SkateBats, a local skateboard club dedicated to teaching blind and partially sighted youth how to skateboard. Azrab held a try-it session with Matt and SkateBats. I was introduced to skateboarding from that. He came to a Skate Bats event. Him and Cassandra just started skateboarding around immediately without really too much instruction. So there was promise there, but then he, then he fell, and he fell on concrete. This is the breaking point for a lot of kids. And I think he said, that happens unfazed by concrete. That's when I knew that he would be a good skateboarder if he stuck with it. All Routes started back in summer 2020, where I had this idea to make the ramps we were using at the time just a tiny bit more visible for, for these kids. When we were at the church having the skate bats sessions, Matt had the bright colored duct tape on the ramps. 
we set out ramps in a concrete floor gym where I couldn't see them. Like I would have to skate on them by feel or like really clumsily on these ramps that didn't have any contrast to the ground. So I just started throwing neon colored duct tape just around the edges of the ramps. Then we started to brainstorm together what would work best. In addition to skating inside the church gym, Matt's skate bats class also meets regularly at an indoor skate park in Calgary, the compound. Before he can teach them new tricks, he has to make sure that they understand which features they need to navigate. This includes discussing the big ramp with Cassandra. We have a, a section of ramps, but some of it is ramp, some of it is stair, some of it is kind of stairs, kind of ramp, and some of it is ramp. And when you are low vision and you're bombing in at Mach 10, um, you can't see what is ramp and what is deathly death drop stairs, right, Cass? Yeah. Oh, dude. And then you could go down and I'll, I'll lead the stairs. What do you mean you'll lead the stairs? I like jump, jump down them. Oh. <laughs> you know, you know, the last time I jumped yeah. down stairs was? Yeah. 10 years ago when I was 21. <laughs> and up go the lights and colored tape. Now Cass is actually used to skating down this big ramp and knows that she will be sailing down the 15 foot 30 degree angle pretty fast and will need to bank back up and around another ramp and circle back to where she started. This is a skate obstacle I want to try today where I jump down these stairs. These lights are showing me where they are and then this yellow strip is showing me where I'm jumping. Even with years of experience, it can be hard to commit to the stair jump. Ah. One more. The skate bats want to attempt a difficult challenge on the level board, a narrow runway 24 feet long with two 8-inch drops on it. These drops can be tough to see, so Matt and the team add some light strips and coloured tape to provide more definition. So we have a light strip, like an airport landing. We also do a bright, high-coloured, high-contrast duct tape right on the end. The kids prepare for Matt's big challenge. Our skateboarders are going to go follow this light strip to this pink, all the way down this little drop, follow this light strip to this big pink off the big drop. This is where kids are going to be falling and hurting themselves and learning and getting back up. So here goes Cass. Oh, first try. Like the response to a minor, really quick adaptation was like a huge light bulb for me and for the kids to realize that we could just use like these minor cheap materials to make skate parks way better for us. I'm a member of the CNIB National Youth Council and one day I got an email essentially saying, hey, there's this organization called Rise in Youth and Taking It Global and they give grants to youth who either want to continue or start a community growth project, essentially. And I was like, this sounds interesting. I wanted to learn more. And so they set up a information session with me and a couple other National Youth Council members. Immediately after that information session, Curtis knew he had a brilliant plan. James and Daniela Russell, Curtis's parents, were the first to hear about it. They came out of that meeting and he was like, I'm going to do accessible skateboarding. And I was like, OK, <laughs> you know. Applying for and getting the grant from the CNIB was the first step. Curtis wanted to bring adaptive skateboarding to a wider range of the partially sighted community. And he wanted to prove that a fully accessible skate park could be a reality. But he needed help putting his plan into action. Instantly, I called Matt and I was like, OK, here's this opportunity. Here's my idea. Would you be willing to help me? The more we talked about adaptive skateboarding, the more we realized there was a ton of potential and a ton of support. Matt helped me in the sense of knowing what to talk about in the sense of skateboarding and culture and what would be the right terminology and all of these things from that aspect of it but my mom was a huge help because we had to learn how to create a budget i've never done that i was 15 when i started this <laughs> i helped them and put together a budget and then i worked with curtis and i taught curtis how to use excel and to track his receipts and input it and away he went when we started a dynamic that really quickly developed was that curtis could worry about like the administrative stuff he, he's so professional and he does things really systematically I made sure the kids were skating and having fun and experiencing movement. 
One more. And that gave Curtis the space to like really think about this project on a functional level, you know? Curtis went to work applying for the grant. They just had to decide how much money the project would need. So they could apply for either $250, $750, or $1,500. Originally, we thought $250, that's more than we know what to spend, right? And then every single time we talked, it just kept getting bigger and bigger and bigger. By the end of it, he's like, no, mom, we're going for $1,500. I was like, OK, we're going for $1,500, <laughs> you know? So good, Gabriel. You can do it. They knew they wanted to, you know, skate with the kids. They wanted to get the feedback. When we had the money in our hands, we were able to say, this is actually happening. And at the end of this skate day, Matt gathers Curtis and the other kids in a circle to whack skateboards, a sort of secret handshake and the perfect send off. On the count of three, boards right in the middle. Yeah. Okay, ready? One, two, three. <laughs> Coming up on the alternate route, oh, nice. we meet the young skateboarders who are helping nice. Curtis's dream come true. I can't see how steep the ramp is, so I just go for it. The, the alternate, alternate route. route. At their local skate park, the compound in Calgary. Yeah, everything? Yeah. So. The group meets to practice some new tricks. You got it, Gabe. Right here, right here, yeah. While Curtis works on various adaptations to help make the skate park more accessible. We are just laying down these lights. It will increase that contrast so that you know where these stairs are to avoid them. There we go. Cassandra continues to work on her big ramp trick. I'm working on going down the large ramp and then doing a kick turn Whoa. on it and then coming back up. It's still a work in progress. Yeah. <laughs> but Cass is fearless. I can't see how steep the ramp is, so I just go for it. And on her next attempt, she nails it. <laughs> it's that drive and determination that pushes Curtis and Matt ahead to create a business plan, secure the needed grant, and get the program up and running. The next big question, what should they call themselves? We were thinking, what's an appropriate name? Like, how do we put this together where it's going to be something that is noticeable and recognizable? When you are disabled, like when you don't have vision, you, you are finding alternate routes of doing everything. Under here, we have tactile strips so that when you're going down the ramp, you're able to feel that haptic feedback. With All Route, we're just committed to finding the alternative way of doing things that work for disabled people. How's your vision with this seam? I can't see it. Can't see it? Let's Me neither. <laughs> I really don't want you to hit this. Oh, yeah, that would kind of suck. That would be brutal. Really, it was bringing the youth in and asking for their opinion. There's this seam here. I don't want to. Yes. Let's, let's mark this. I am Gabriel Pigeon, and I am 14 years old. I, I'm the test dummy. For me, uh, it's completely flat. I won't be able to tell how steep it is. And uh, with the duct tape, I'll actually be able to tell that, hey, there's going to be a seam here. I test the new accessibility stuff. If it doesn't work, I tell them. How good are the lights? Uh, the lights are really good. Super good. You're going to aim kind of for the corner All right. right about here. How's that? Yeah. I don't really have depth perception. My macula is underdeveloped. My eyes don't work together, and they are shaking constantly. How'd that feel? Uh, it wasn't as fast as I thought it would be. OK, well, that's not too bad. I don't know the percentage of my vision, but it's a 20 over 350, 20 over 400-ish. Before you get going down, I need your feet over your bolts. All right. Maybe, do you want a little marker where, uh, where you're? Yes, please. Just some bolt, some bolt markers. It's going to tell me where I'm going to place my feet to get the best gravity so I don't fall. While Curtis concentrates on the fundraising, planning, and development. Listen to my board. <laughs> yeah. 
His younger sister, Cassandra Ruttle, works as part of the testing team while learning to skate from Matt. So a nice big turn. I have an iridia, and it's like the loss of the iris, so I don't have a color in my eyes, and it makes me have low vision and very light sensitive. Well, I help them set up the tape most of the time, and I test the rumbo strips going down a ramp. Yeah. When we're outside and like outside just in general, if I can't see certain things, it's a little bit of a struggle to get around places. And like the FS sign's like right there in your face, it makes it harder to see. Skateboarding, you can just be free. You don't have to worry about what else is going on in the world. And you're really only worrying about what's happening in skateboarding. The compound's big half pipe is a nine foot drop at almost 90 degrees and is no joke, even for experienced skateboarders. Cass decides to take the plunge. Now, Cass always likes a challenge, and she leans towards the harder tricks, but Gabriel is a bit more cautious. So Gabe is working on going down a small wedge ramp, like a straight to the ground kind of wedge. And then he's coming up this quarter pipe, which is more of like a round transition. And what he's doing is he's going down this wedge ramp with a lot of speed, and he's gonna do a turnaround, like a kick turn on this, on this big wall here. Shoulders. Whoa, that's so good, one more try. Well, first of all, it was fun, but absolutely terrifying. Yeah. But I, I kind of just wanted to try it, so I did it. Now, Gabe and Matt head over to the bigger ramp for a little more speed. I was always scared of falling, and then Matt taught us how to bail. You can, on your first time, bail here. You can, on your second time, bail here. But there's always those times where improper placement, fallen, torn open my knees. Nice work. Another important member of the team is 13-year-old Zach, and he's learned how to bail as well. Now he's practicing proper pad placement to save himself from injury. There you go. Nice. Nice, Zach. We helped him get more comfortable with pads. Oh, with Zach, um, I taught him pads 101. Yeah. So this is where I'm teaching him the mindset of get to the knee. If you're falling, make sure you don't hit your body or take a shoulder to the concrete. Yeah. Always get to your knees, and then that's the safety zone. Bail, bail. Yeah. Skateboarding is a blood-sucking vampire, man. I have permanent scar tissue and all my teeth are fake. Skateboarding chooses you, we'll just say that. Matt is giving the big round a try, further testing their adaptations. He glides down and around the ramp at an impressive speed and makes it all look like a piece of cake. I could skateboard before I started losing my vision. And even guys like Dan Mancina and Justin Bishop, those dudes could skate before they lost their vision. And so me and those dudes, we have an unfair advantage. What these kids are doing, they're learning how to skateboard and they don't have any vision. You know, like they're up against it visually and they're up against it with they don't know how to skateboard. It's hard to believe that simple, inexpensive solutions such as colored duct tape and LED lighting strips can make such a big difference. That works perfect. The colored tape makes it so easy to tell if I'm transitioning from like flat to going down. On here, we like to do this, the double strip. We were kind of hoping to create that standard of if you see this, that's what it's going to mean. Pink tape is a transition and white is flat. The yellow tape is like a guideline from like one area to the next. It helps like us feel a lot more safer in the skate park. We found some different things that we needed to fix and they were super, super easy to fix. The one participant of ours had trouble with the guidelines that we use because it was one long solid line. It was too much fatigue for his eyes. 
So what he wanted was a dotted line separated. And that wasn't something that we originally thought of, but it was the simplest fix that you could make. And it still taught us something. All right, Gabe, so those lights are awesome. You can aim kind of for that corner. Gabriel gets ready to tackle the big ramp one last time for the day and plans for the perfect bail. The kids' role in this process is they're advocates for, for beginners. It's crazy the courage they have. We envisioned being, yes, we can do this. Yes, we can skateboard. Yes, we can do whatever other thing that we want to do. We might have to do it differently. This is a big ramp, dude. It is. <laughs> It's crazy what they're doing and uh, how much work they've put into it. So if you master this, then next summer we're cruising at outdoors. Oh, all Ooh. right. Okay. Coming up. So welcome skateboarders, welcome a million cameras. <laughs> the Alt Route team plans their first showcase event. I was very stressed. These guidelines, we need dotted line. The, the alternate, alternate route. route. Alternate Skateboard instructor Matt Jans and 15-year-old Curtis Ruttel had spent the past few months creating the Alt Route project and creating and testing their adaptations. Oh, that didn't go well. Now they needed to raise some awareness. The plan was to hold a media showcase at the compound skate park, and Curtis's mum, Daniela, was part of the planning process. There were so many moving parts because they would come up with one idea and then another idea and then another, and every time they would talk to each other, they would come up with something else. The months of planning were suddenly coming to fruition. Thousands of emails had been sent out, budgets created and tweaked, supplies purchased, media interviews arranged, and not to mention, a plan to keep everyone safe while gathering during a pandemic. And it was all hands on deck to get it ready. It's been crazy, and the amount of work that has been put into it is a lot, but I do gotta say, I, I never expected it to, t to come to this point of where it is today, so all of the work is worth it. I was very stressed during the event because we were like behind on setting up. We need to make sure that these um, guidelines, we need, remember, we need uh, a dotted, dotted line. A dotted, yeah, I'm gonna yeah. get Grayson on that right now. As the team quickly tried to get everything ready, local news crews began to arrive, which added even more stress to Curtis's day. I was worried that this person was here and I didn't get to talk to them as much as I would have liked. Oh, what's this person thinking? Some of the people were wanting me and I was running in 9,000 different directions. <laughs> we need dotted line. I'll get started in here. There was a lot to do, and Curtis wanted it all to be perfect. Matt knew he could handle the challenge. Planning the event was, it was more work than expected. We need to adapt the park and then be able to explain ourselves, you know, to a news media crew that comes out for one day and who has like 10 minutes to get a story and get it right. Before the showcase event begins, Curtis gives one media outlet a quick tour of the big ramp to explain some of their adaptations, something he will be doing a lot of throughout the afternoon. We've been using lights recently to increase contrast and to really make things pop. And then it's showtime. Curtis and Matt take a moment to gather the group together for a brief chat before they skate. So welcome skateboarders, welcome. A million cameras <laughs> that I can't see. <laughs> Welcome to our low vision skateboarding events. Everyone's made so much progress and I can't wait to see what you can show today to everyone and to prove that um, vision impaired skateboarding is doable, right? That's the thing, you guys are the it's future. <laughs> yes. Okay. So let's skate. Let's go. Let's go. Oh. All right. Then it's time for the kids to show off for the cameras. First up, 12-year-old Cassandra demonstrates what she's been practicing on the big ramp. Great. Next up, Gabriel's turn to nail his trick on that big ramp. Oh, and after that, Cass dropped in on the deep half pipe. I forgot the turn. 
Thank you. Matt strapped on his pads to work with Zach. And it was clear at this point, everyone is starting to relax and have some fun. You know what? Zach's gonna teach me how to knee slide a bit. Oh, is he? He's gonna teach me. 14 year old Zach shows off the perfect knee slide for the cameras. And then Matt does too. Oh, yeah. With some feedback from Zach, who reminds Matt that he needs to pull his shoulders back when he lands. Oh, right, 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 right. On the other side of the compound, Cass was practicing a new trick that Curtis found very familiar. She took my trick. No, I didn't. <laughs> she took mine. No. And later, during an interview, Cass decides to tease him back. Who's a better skateboarder, you or Curtis? Me. <laughs> <laughs> Just like that, no yeah. hesitation or anything. Go ahead, do it again, Cass. You can do it. But all joking aside, the feelings of support were in the air, with high fives and cheers from friends. Look at that. Well done, Jordan. Well done. Good job, bud. Then it's Curtis's moment in the lights. With three news cameras set up in front of him, he was ready to tell everyone about Alt Room. The community aspect of it, to be able to bring everyone together, has been a huge part of it. And we've gotten so much interest in this. Are you sure you're just 15? Yeah. You are a great interview. Yeah. Thank you so much. No worries. Yeah, awesome. Great. Awesome. Getting media and making sure everything went smoothly today, it was a lot. But it turned out amazing. I think it went really, really well. There's just so much like advocacy that went into it that it was a ton of work to make sure that that all got done properly, which I mean, Curtis did. He got it all done really well. James Ruttle, Curtis's dad, knows firsthand just how much work his son Curtis had put into this event. Curtis put in countless hours after school, in the evenings, on the weekends. And for being 50 years old, he did an amazing job of putting it all together. When I was 15, I was just skateboarding, you know, like I was just wrecking public property. But now Curtis is making skateboarding something for himself. And what that looks like is going through the process of writing for grants, going through the process of connecting with municipal leaders. I don't know any 15 year old, 16 year olds who would go through that process, but he's down for the work on and off the board and he gets stuff done. Come on, Dave. I look up to him a lot because he has great leadership skills. And with that, he's able to get a lot done. Gotta do it again. Go ahead. I think it's really good. He's like very busy all the time, but he does a lot of really good work. When you have a kid who's willing to put in work, it drives programs forward. To have everyone safe, independent, confident as they were, at the end of the day, it was amazing to see. It was such a big learning experience for him, but it all came together, it was such a great event. I think it was for them so that they could say, look what we're capable of doing. And I think it was so good for all, everyone involved. It was a lot of work and we had to put ourselves out there, but because we did, it's given us the momentum that we now need to really make adaptive skateboarding a thing. Coming up. We've gone bigger. We've done better. The Alt Root group gets noticed. The stoke is high, the vibe is good. The, the alternate, alternate route. route. The, the alternate, alternate route. route. It's Calgary's largest and oldest outdoor skate park, Shaw Millennium Park and it is over an acre of deep drops, curves, and edges. The park itself has three separate sections, each usually buzzing with skaters of all ages. And on this sunny Saturday, excitement is building as volunteers, friends, and family are hard at work. The stoke is high, the vibe are good. Curtis's dad, James, is in awe of how much larger this summer showcase event will be. There's so much more to it. We've got so much more involvement, whether it be volunteers, parents, even some of the skateboarders. And it's just been great to getting to where we are right now. 
By now, Curtis has become an expert spokesperson for Alt Route. Hello and welcome everyone to our Alt Route second accessible skate park project. Uh, We've gone bigger, we've gone better, um, and a ton of work has gone into this. Coordination with the city, getting power or internet for a live stream that we're running, or even getting the materials, just the smallest things like that that make the big difference. And the hours that we've put into this is insane. And, and I'm excited to see it all pay off today. And Matt knows what the group's plan is for the day as well. I think what we want to do today as low vision skateboarders is just make a big statement that says we want to be involved in skateboarding. We want to be involved in skate park design. We want to be involved in skateboard event planning. And this is our way of doing that. At this event, the stakes are higher for the low vision skaters, not just because they are performing in front of a larger crowd, but also because the outdoor skate park environment can be less forgiving. There's just way bigger ramps, everything's steeper, everything is gnarlier, there's bumps and cracks, and there's just real life here. If we don't have this tape down and we roll into the bowl, we're rolling into a sea of gray. There's just no definition. If we lay down these lines, they give us a little hint as to when we're rolling in, when we're coming up the bump and back down, and if we're following a safe route guideline, um, it's 100% it's more confidence to be able to use this environment. This tougher, different environment, although more difficult, offers Curtis the freedom to change his objective this time around. I wanted it to be more public. I wanted to put it out there and say, hey, if you're interested, come skate with us. The plan is to have a live stream, more news cameras, and way more people watching. Curtis knew more support was needed. He reached out for more sponsors, another grant, and support from the city. City Councillor Evan Woolley, also a skateboard enthusiast, was keen to jump on board. It really is this project of community building that we're doing right here today and that we do every day in this city. And, you know, it makes me feel really proud of folks like Curtis and everybody involved here in the community building project that we're doing. Curtis is the 16-year-old with a passion for skateboarding. He needs access in a different way, and he didn't have the access that he needed, so he went out and built it. But then to build it into something more than that uh, is just, it's mind-blowing. Curtis, thank you so much, man, and thank you for having me here today. By now, Curtis knows all about the stress of creating an event like this, but something makes this one different from the last one. Yes, I was actually really stressed, but I didn't feel as bad because we were set up early, we were good to go, and I was able to stand and talk with people like who were there and have conversations. And I was actually able to skate and enjoy myself for a decent amount of the time where the November event, I was running around in 9,000 different directions. As the crowd looks on and news cameras roll, Curtis glides down the long 60-foot concrete ramp, banks around the far side and heads back, making it look easy. <laughs> I've been practicing a whole lot and I've been working on different things and I'm excited to show that and just continue personal progression. Since their last showcase event in November, all the kids have improved their skills and a new young skater, Grace, has also come out today to show off her technique. Woo! Woo! This is our first time going down the main big area of this park, of Millennium Park. And uh, her skateboarding is absolutely perfect. Gabriel has been working hard too. He skates down the same long bowl over the three foot hill in the middle and up the far side. With Matt chasing him, he does it again and makes it no problem, showing off his huge progress and confidence since last November. Matt suggests another, even tougher challenge. OK. That's quite satisfying. You made it here. Yep. Now let's go on the next run. Let's go back over the center bump again. Uh, let's do it. So you would hit it three times. It's still a work in progress for Gabe. Oh. Whoa! Yeah. Oh, so close! <laughs> oh, dang oh. it. Oh. But more importantly, he's developed the confidence to keep trying, just like fellow young boarder Zach. OK, I'm not going over. Zach's been working on riding solo down a long slope and over a two-foot hill at the bottom. I'm trying to speed up there. 
Matt has him make a small adjustment, and after that, Zach has it. Yes! yes! Good job, good job. Did it! <laughs> Zach's mum, Chris Abdallah, has seen her son improve a lot on his board in the past six months. She is so proud of what the Alt Root group and Zach have accomplished. But as a parent admits, it is sometimes a bit tough to watch. One of my mantras, I guess, as a parent is, if it makes me uncomfortable, it's probably the right thing to do for Zach's independence. Yeah. But having these tools and having these adaptions within the environment certainly help ease my nervousness about it, because I can tell you he's not nervous anymore. They've really adapted to the bigger ramps, bigger challenges, carving around, getting a feel for actual skateboard, like carving in a bowl. They're learning how to ollie and do technical stuff. It's wild. Over a different bowl, Curtis's daredevil younger sister, Cassandra, has been working alone on a difficult trick that she really wants to nail. Dropping down over 20 feet, then riding back up the far side and landing solid. She is the only young alt root skater willing to attempt this one. I'm going to be going down the big ramp and then rolling it out of the bowl and trying to land back on my board. It's working pretty well. Attempt number one. Cass doesn't quite make the landing, but after a few more tries... She does it. Yeah. Woo! Yes. Oh, yeah. Yes. It really blew my mind to see how many people were actually there, aside from our group. Like, some other kids with their parents, other low-vision kids with their parents who were trying it. One, two, three, four. Oh. I saw someone who I had never seen before with vision loss trying it, and Matt was working with them. Do you like rolling around? Yeah. Yeah? Is that fun? Yeah. The new recruit was 13-year-old Ariane, who came to the event with her mom wanting to learn how to skate, and she is loving it. And bam! And Matt was pleased to take on a new student. Um, are you guys happy to continue kind oh, yeah. of going around? Yeah. And then I'm gonna come back in like five minutes and give you guys a new challenge. Ooh, How about that? Okay? It was just amazing to see that we had actually made that impact of getting kids out there and convince them that you're able to do this. Megan Mahone, the program lead for children and youth at CNIB, has provided support for Curtis and the group along the way and is proud of what he has accomplished. The world is not made for um, accessibility, so you have to find ways of doing what you love. And I think that being able to create a skate park that's accessible for everybody is something that is just a next step in being able to have the broader uh, vision of accessibility. This is all about learning and uh, try to be inclusive. This event was more to let the public know that no matter what your ability, disability, your level of sight, that you can do whatever you put your mind to. And it only takes a small adaptation. They're out here practicing every weekend. They're out here skating together and they're laying down tape and pulling up tape. And it definitely is a time consuming thing, but they're doing it because they love it. And it's incredible to see. As the day comes to an end, as the colored tape and adaptations are removed and the signs taken down, Curtis happily reflects. The people were amazing. The feedback and the love and support we got was amazing. It's just completely mind blowing. I'm so happy today was as amazing as it was. Councillor Wooley has hope for the future. This park is like getting really tired, uh, old and tired and it's going to need a, a pretty significant refresh. And as you start to rebuild these pieces of wreck infrastructure, you start building these tape lines and these wires and these like all of these tools, you start building it into the rebuild now, right? And that, and that will happen. The people who needed to hear what we were saying heard, heard it. And so all, all the effort that went into that event, it just all accumulated into this statement that the right people heard. All right, guys, let's get out of here. Yeah. All right. That was great. Coming up. Next for All Route is more skateboarding. It's possible to create a Paralympics team. 
the, the alternate, alternate route. route. It's been a long but rewarding journey for Curtis Brussel, Matt Jans, and the Alt Root Group. The spark of an idea and the vision for an inclusive place where everyone can skateboard together has now come to this. What they have created worked as they hoped it would. They had made a difference. Maybe the old saying was true. If you build it, they will come. As soon as we laid down adaptations, everyone comes to our part and they use whatever obstacle that the adaptations are put on. I think it's just because it makes it more colorful and inviting and accepting and all of that, because it really adds life to the park, I feel. It was especially noticeable with the showcase at Millennium Park as Curtis reflects on a special image captured that day. There was a photo taken from that pedestrian bridge over top down onto the park of all of the adaptations with the colors, with the downtown skyline in the background. And I just keep looking at it. I can't get over how colorful and welcoming. And then when you take all of that up, it just looks so plain and boring and everything. And so the colors, the adaptations, even just add more life to it. You're taking these like, environments, the skate park, which is a threatening environment. Like you could fall and hurt yourself and it's all concrete and it's hard to learn in. But I think programs like this take that edge off and the more adaptive they are and the more diverse the crowd is, the inclusivity just goes up automatically and naturally. The more we adapt parks, the more people just like skate with us and ask questions and get stoked on our vibe. What's next for Alt Route? Gabriel Pigeon has some ideas. What's next? Getting every skate park completely and fully adapted. Instead of tape, we want to paint. Next for Alt Route is more skateboarding and continuing this momentum we have within the skateboarding community. We're hoping to bring in some more supports, but also we want to hopefully expand to uh, other provinces around us as well. We've talked about other sports, and so I think to take this mentality we have in skateboarding, like this whole grant writing process and what can we do to make this environment better for ourselves with low vision, that whole process, it's totally transferable. And so I think like rock climbing is next. There's stuff to change in like hockey. What's to stop us from lighting up a hockey rink? And we want to continue our conversation with Skateboard Canada it's possible to create a Paralympic team. Curtis's mum, Daniela, watches from the sidelines and shines with pride. I see him and I see how hard he works and I think that this is just the beginning. I do think that he will, you know, really change the world. It's just gonna be amazing to see all of this form and come together and normalize blind and low vision skateboarders, but also just blind and low vision athletes in general. And now we're here at Mills, the OG skate park of Calgary. Are you gonna just skate and have some fun? Producer director, Lance Corbett. Narrator, Beth Deer. Director of photography, Alan Leader. Sound recordist, Justin Ross. Story and video editor, Joanna Ryan. Media accessibility specialist, Ron Rickford. Audio post, Mark Phoenix. Graphics, Andrew Antonello. Senior producer, Michelle Dudas. President and CEO, David Errington. Nice. Copyright 2021 Accessible Media Inc.